happy Wednesday. Here we go. Oh my gosh. It's been a week and it's only Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Glad you're here. Glad I'm here. Glad I have coffee. That's really probably the most important thing. I'm going to drink the whole thing today. You know, it doesn't look like I very put like I put very much in there, but it's espresso. It's two shots because I need a double today. So, how's your day going? Do you need a double? Have you moved on to a glass of wine? Is it time for a martini? What's happening in your world? It is crazy busy around here. We have advanced class going on. We're in that Floral Design Institute certified floral designer stage. And so everybody's excited. There's so many teachers running around. There's so much going on. If you hear laughing and giggling and such, it's the other side of the wall. Teacher Carolyn is there with the class and they are doing gardenias and stephanotis. This morning they did formal linear casket spray. They did gorgeous, absolutely amazing on that. Um, and it's interesting because, yes, we teach it as sympathy in a casket spray, but it's the same technique that you would use in wedding for a head table. And they turned out stunning. So now this afternoon, if you hear them, they might not be giggling because gardenias and stephanotis is a little stressful, so it might not be giggling. But you may hear them over there going, Ear! because gardenias and stephanotis can be challenging. Hmm. So yeah, it's kind of, we're all spinning. Are you spinning? How goes it? So it's 303. Are you here with me? Who's coming late? Who's here on time? Get it together. We're on time. In the studio, I have teacher Michelle, I have teacher Ka Caledonia, <laughs> teacher Ricky with me, and they are keeping us together. So Ricky will be on YouTube, Michelle will be on Facebook. Then virtually, we have Caledonia, and we have Susie. Susie on YouTube, Caledonia on Facebook. And virtually, I bet you David's out there. So we've got a full house. We have you. Take a moment right now. Type in where you're from. Let us know. Love to see how broad the reach is. If you're part of the Tulip Bunch, go ahead and put your icon in there. And if you're part of the Tulip Bunch, be sure to look at the Facebook Tulip Bunch page a lot of words, Facebook Tulip Bunch page, and Ricky just posted that she has some new gifts that are available that you can use on your Instagram posting. So that's kind of exciting. It's been a big day around here. So I have coffee, and I have flowers. So let's get started. Well, it's a busy day in, in Tulipville also. Drake's, Tulipville? Tulipville. Drake says he's working on one of three weddings for the weekend. Oh, Drake, you are crazy busy. Three weddings this weekend. How many of the rest of you are doing weddings? And how many? This is, I mean, it's amazing. It used to be June, July, August was the wedding world. Then it moved to June, July, August, September. And now almost year-round, but I would say the peak months are March through October, so it is crazy busy. I know Teacher Jerry and Teacher, Teacher Anna are both book solid this weekend. They've got so much going on. So are you doing weddings? Let us know. We're not talking weddings today, but I'm always curious. Are you busy, crazy, and going bonkers with weddings? I do have a live coming up. So pay attention, watch your emails. If you don't get our emails, be sure to subscribe to that email list because then you'll find out because we do have a wedding focused live coming up. It's all on pricing and profitability because now that you're going through the season and you're gonna go in that short lull just before you go into the January kickoff for the new year, Now's the time to think about pricing, profitability, and are you achieving what you want? So make sure you signed up for the newsletter so you get notified about that, because that's happening. What else is going on out there while I get things ready here? 
Well, we've got a lot of tulips chiming in on Facebook. Uh, so far, I've seen Denise, Drake, Josh, Carl, Marjorie, Dorian, Kathy, Anne, Wayne, Renee, haven't seen Renee for quite a while, Sherry, Rick, uh, I can't read my own writing right there, <laughs> and Jim has joined us. Hello. So Jim's with us. So hello, Jim's mom. I know you guys are watching it in tandem. So Tulips, everybody out there, YouTube, Facebook land, give a shout out and say, hi, mom, to Jim's mom, because it might be her very first time. So we're going to embarrass you. We're going to say we love you and glad you joined us. And welcome to the Tulip Bunch. So hello to Jim's mom and everybody, shout out, do it now. So my first arrangement, um, today we're talking about autumn flowers. I talked about in the little letter that I sent out to you that I talk about the varieties, the care, and some little tricks that goes with it. And when I think about autumn flowers, I think about the abundance of the season, because as you can see, there's lots. Autumn is great for the floral world. And then also the maturity of the season. So things are starting to fade. So how do you continue using them? How do you capitalize on that as a professional florist? And then I also think about foraging, because autumn is when foraging is fabulous. And those of you that have been here to Portland, to flower school, usually it's the September class into October, but we're just right at the end right now. It's just about over. So it usually starts about Labor Day and goes to the very beginning of October is when the Buckeyes fall in Portland. And we have a tree that's just a few blocks here from the classroom. It's just up the street on Kearney, and they have the most beautiful buckeyes, and if you're not familiar with them, some people call them horse chestnuts. They're not edible, they're strictly ornamental. If you own the tree, you would say they were strictly messy, because it is quite messy when they fall. But personally, I love them. And as soon as they start falling, I drag David down the road because he has to carry them all. And I drag him down and I get all my bags and I start gathering Buckeyes. And I spend probably two weeks every night down there gathering Buckeyes. And I have a really large, very large ceramic tray that I just mound with Buckeyes at the house. Why? Because they're pretty. That's all. They're pretty. And I love to touch them. It's a very tactile thing. So I went last night and gathered a few more. And it's at the very, very end. Uh, I had troubles. I got a small bag. In fact, this is everything I was able to gather last night. And I thought, I will share this with you. So these are Buckeyes. None from my house because I saved those. Those are mine. But I had to bring some in for you. And you've seen us do arrangements oftentimes with a container and then adding in citrus, you know, oranges, lemons, limes, sliced. And we to do that, we put a separate liner on the inside. Does that show, Ricky? Yeah, if you actually want to point it towards our close-up camera. Got that, a good angle. Does it show there well? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So you can see I put a liner in place. I have the Buckeyes on the outer area, and then to make sure that the liner doesn't shift, I did clear waterproof tape across two directions. Then to make that stay put, I'm going to take clear waterproof tape and go all the way around the perimeter. If you don't do that, it can let go. Waterproof tape in the clear version isn't nearly as strong as the green. So you've got to go ahead and go all the way around. And you can see I have edges that are not pretty. It's all goobered up. And that is intentional. And if you go back to our Tulip Tuesday playlist, 
you'll even see where we talk about adding a courtesy tab where you just fold it over on itself and goober it up because that way when you go to find the end again, you can find it easy. So I have a little tip for you as we're doing this. Then here is the goobered end that was the original piece when I was putting it together. So I just cut that off because I certainly don't want that to be there. You don't want to see that. Then I go back and just make sure that it's secured down. And that way I can go in and add water and be ready to design. Now I didn't finish because I wanted you to see how the liner was in there. But all I'm doing is tucking in the buckeyes and I just squeeze them in right around the edges. And some buckeyes are bigger than others, so you might have to adjust a little bit. Like here's a little tiny baby one. I can just sit right in there and you just keep going. There's another little baby one. There's a bigger one. And what I find is as I place them, I just push all the way around and push them down so that they get well seated. Because I want to make sure that you don't see my liner. You don't see in. You're going to see a little bit probably, but hopefully it just covers in there. Isn't that fun? Don't you love it? Don't you wish you had a buckeye tree by your house? If you came to flower school in September, you could have gone down. I told the class, I said, here's my secret spot, and I gave them the address. And I know several of them did go down and harvest because there's plenty for all of us. It's a very, very, very prolific tree. It's huge. Um, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's so grand. So, key point when you're looking at getting ready for autumn, just think about foraging. What can you gather? Because it's a lot of fun to be able to just collect things and say, ooh, doesn't that look then, as far as flowers, I gathered several things because I want to talk about care and handling and how to take care of them. A little bit of details there because autumn flowers can last really well or they can die instantly. Yeah, unfortunately, true. And if you don't want them to die instantly, there's a few tricks to work with. So let's kind of go through here, see what we've got. Uh, this is solid aster uh, related to goldenrod. It is dyed or tinted, color enhanced, and I purchased it this way. I did not do it, um, but it is color enhanced. It will dry and look beautiful. It will hold its color. It will start to fade, but it still will be grand. So it's a nice thing to use as a base material in your arrangements because even as things start to fade, they'll look beautiful. So I'm going to start with this. And while I get things placed in here, I'm removing any foliage that's going to be below because that will keep it alive as long as possible. And then I'm going to cut it and place it in. So while I do that, Teacher Michelle, what you got? Well, a couple things. First, Renee wanted to know if you've ever done this technique with coffee beans, since you're such a coffee lover. I do, yes, and it's so cool with coffee beans because you also get the aroma. Oh, yes, coffee beans are great. So the key is to find inexpensive beans because you don't want to buy the most expensive ones just to put into an arrangement. Um, but yes, coffee beans work beautifully. Excellent question. So, yeah. You can do this with so many things. This is a technique I use over and over and over because it's quick, it's easy, and it's beautiful. So it makes it so great. Other questions? One was just a shout out. Uh, Shishi is with us on YouTube and I just finished doing her final for her advanced class, which she passed and I just printed out her certificates for you to sign. She's FDI certified now. Ooh, she, she, FDI certified, congratulations. So that tells me your certificate is sitting on my desk. So after live, I'll go out and I will sign it so you'll know that I am signing it just for you. And congratulations.
congratulations from me to you. And tulips, let's do congratulations to Shishi from all of us. So let her know how excited you are for her and how proud you are of her. Because going the full distance to FDI certified takes some effort. I'm proud of you. Good job. Ricky, anything over there in YouTube land that I need to be paying attention to? Yeah, we've got quite a few tulips um, regarding weddings. Brooke has two weddings coming up this weekend that she's working on. Oh, Brooke, you're going to be busy. And hello, YouTube. So if you are on YouTube land, let us know what's going on in your world. Ricky will be watching for you. She'll let me know what you say. So jump in there and say, hey, let us know what's happening. And besides, I know many of you on YouTube are our international group, and so the time zone is different. So for you, you're probably having dinner. What are you eating? Are you cooking? Are you cooking while you're watching? What's happening? I know that YouTube land is a little different community simply because the timing is different. So what's going on over there? Fill us in, and Ricky will let me know. What else is happening out there? Well, everyone's given a shout out to Shishi now for congratulating her on her um, graduation certificate, which is pretty cool. Yay! Hey, yeah. I had somebody else and I lost them. I don't know where it went. Well, while you're looking, it's kind of fun because the class that's here with me right now in Portland on Friday will be graduating and becoming FDI certified floral designers which is a very exciting time. And you're coming out just as the holiday is getting busy. There's going to be so much work that needs to be done for the seasons. And so graduation is timed well. We've got one last class that begins on October 23rd that will graduate before the autumn holidays. So if you are still on the fence and going, oh, should I be doing that? Yes, you should. Get registered right now. We want you. It's time. Become a certified floral designer. Get your act together. You know, right now. So, homework time. We're talking about autumn flowers. We're talking about care and handling. We're talking about how to choose them. Talking about foraging, adding value. Who do you know that should be joining us? So if there's 50 of you out there, if 50 of you tag a friend and get them on there, we'll have 100 of us here. And then we can collaborate with 100 people. So please, share this out, tag a friend, spread the word, and I promise you I'll share more on flower education. What else is going on? Well, Judy had a question. Can you review the mechanics you have in the middle that you're, is allowing the stems to stand upright? Well, you know, it's a little tricky. You know. um, what I'm doing is a weave. So everything is supporting everything else. In the center, I have nothing more than a plastic liner. So there's nothing to support the stems. I didn't do floral netting. I didn't do a Kins on. So I'm having to be very careful and get all my stems to create a weave, and they're supporting each other. So that's my mechanic. And so that question leads into the perfect thing. What I need is some weight at the base to make it even better. And I thought I would use Autumn Flower, Solosha Cristata. It is often called coxcomb or brain plant, but it's a solosha. And you can see it's very large, very pretty. I'll put it into the close-up. There we go, I got it in there. I'm not a good one following the close-up camera. But you can see how gorgeous that is. It's textural and it dries and looks beautiful. I have a dry piece here somewhere. Let me find it. We had a little bit of a tip over so everything got moved around. Okay, here is one that I had used earlier, same bunch, 
but this one is dried. There we go, get it back in there. So this one's totally dried, dead, there's no stem, it's just dead. But it's still beautiful. And that's one of the beauties of the Solutia family. You can cut it and let it be in water and it will drink and be lush and fabulous for a long time. But as it fades, it's still beautiful. So that's one of the joys of autumn flowers is that they will dry and look great very quickly. So in this, the mechanics, you were asking about that and I said it's a weave, but my weave is weak right now. And what I needed was some weight that helps hold everything down. And so by using the celosia, that gives me a little more substance that holds things in place that will make sure that the stems don't flip out. And so that answers your question. How do I get it to stay? It's a weave, which we teach in basic floral design, so that's nothing super fancy. I mean, all of you that have had flower school, you're like, oh yeah, we got that, weave, duh. But then, adding the weight in there is what's making it happen. So that is one of the things about autumn flowers that's pretty fabulous that you all can work with, is they will dry and look great. So it's a very long-lasting, everlasting design. Ricky, what's happening? Um, Singer had a good tip to share for some fall foraging. They shared that they call the city and ask where the trucks are pruning and then follow them around and collect the vines and branches that they cut off. Brilliant! I do the same thing. Now, I don't call them, but now that you've told me to do that, I might be doing that. I actually just kind of, because I do a lot of walking in the city, and so I look to see where the trucks are, and they're pruning, and they're pruning beautiful things. I always go running out, ooh, can I have that? And they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. Um, but then they'll load my arms. They'll help me. And one time they even delivered it for me. That was pretty funny. City truck drops everything off for me. Um, but yes, but excellent. So call the city and find out where they're pruning. That's a great idea. I haven't tried that. Okay. What else you got there, Ricky? Um, and then we have a question from Annabella. She just recently found our channel and is wondering what are the steps to becoming FDI certified? Okay, well, and what was her name? Annabella. Okay, Annabella, it's easy and it's hard because it's a lot of work on your part. You've got to study, you've got to commit, but there are three steps to becoming FDI certified. One, you have to want to, okay, because it is a commitment. Then two, you complete the basic floral design course. If you've already been a florist and you have your basic skills, you can test out of that. Then lastly, complete the advanced floral design course, and then you've got the desire, you've got your basic, you've got your advanced, you are an FBI certified florist. And you get the certificate, you have the right to use the credentials FDI after your name, there's the golden lapel pin, that is yours, and you are FDI certified, which also then qualifies with the American Institute of Floral Designers to take their online test and become CFT. So you could be dual internationally certified. If you'd like to get information about that, um, private message me, leanna.floralinstitute.com, um, your email address, and I can send that to you, or call us here at the school, 503-223-8089. But get a hold of us, and we can help you with the fine-tuning details. But it all begins with getting your basic skills, then going on to the advanced skills, completing your testing, and then you can have your FDI certified. Don't you love these? It's Rodeckia, Black Eyed Susan. They are gorgeous autumn flowers, but sometimes they don't hold well. I'm picking carefully and picking blooms that are lovely to show you. You can see, aren't they great? They're just kind of like, I gotta find a hole for that one. 
There we go. They're gorgeous. But sometimes find one that's not so gorgeous. They're damaged. They're droopy. Not so lovely. But you know, in the autumn, you can solve that. Look at this one. It's all kind of ratty. With these, you just want to remove the petals. And then you have the beautiful black eye. Isn't that great? Then go ahead and use it. Design with it. It adds so much beauty. And what I love is it ends up looking, find my hole here, there we go, very much like echinacea or coneflower, which I bought this to look like that. I bought these to look like that. This one was damaged. I can still sell it, just like this one, putting that in. Teacher Michelle, what's going on in your world? Well, it looks like a buckeye on a stick. A buckeye on a stick? Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's perfect. Oh! It, it enhances is the unity in your design. It does! Oh my gosh, I love that. Has a question to us at FDI and to the tulips. She recently inherited some cake stands from her mother, and she's wondering if we have favorite designs that we like to showcase on cake stands. Ah, okay, tulips. Let's see what you've got to answer that. And Michelle, if you'll make a note of it so that we circle back to that. Sure. Um, let's let the tulips answer first, and then we can follow up because cake stands. Oh my gosh, I have three different ones, three different sizes that I use here quite frequently um, because they really showcase arrangements well. So that's a great question. So thank you for asking that and lucky you for having them. And tulips, let's see what we can share about designing with a cake stand. So for this design, the concept was foraging, materials for longevity, repurposing materials that are maybe not fabulous with the petals, but using them in a different way. And then I had some more Celosia. This was the Celosia cristata. This is in the plumosa family of Celosia, where it's a little bit spikier but it's going to dry and look fabulous. So it's one that you can add into your arrangements and just let it be beautiful. And it gives the illusion that your arrangements are incredibly long lasting when the reality is it's mostly that you're using materials that will dry and look great no matter what. And notice the texture. That's one of the things that I love about autumn, is the designs become very textural. Yesterday, no, Monday in class, we did a textural orb, and it's really almost a tapestry when you're done with it, because the whole goal is to make sure that everything has that tactile quality, both visual and actual, so that you just want to reach out and touch it because it's so grand. And the students did amazing with it. It turned out so beautiful. Just filling in, filling in, coming back now with a few more things. And you can see the buckeyes down in the bottom just give so much interest to the whole design and then everything else just pulls up, looks grand. This one has a little bit of a droop to it. What I would do is remove the petals because we know it's not drinking well. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that. And then to keep it from being quite so droopy because that's that's pretty droopy. I'm going to use an 18 gauge wire. Well, I hunt for an 18. What's going on out there? 
Well, <coughs> Sweetbriar wondered if he would repeat the name of the orange flower. I don't remember if it was a Coreopsis or the I think it's the one right in front of you. It's the it is bit. the Rebeccia. It is Rebeccia or Black Eyed Susan. And is it that one? Yes. Yeah. So that one is Rebeccia or Black Eyed Susan. Now, what I've done with this one so that it is upright is I took an 18 gauge wire and just wired the stem so that way I can put it in. The wire will hide because I don't want it to show. And now that I've petaled it, it's not going to wilt. And the wire is going to hold it upright so that it looks beautiful. And I can do that with all of these sort of loopy droopy ones. And that way I don't have to throw them away. I can still enjoy them get the value out of them. And I think with most of your autumn materials like this, where you do have little issues sometimes where they don't last quite as long, if you just take the time to put a wire in it and go ahead and use it, it solves that problem. My Buckeye jumped out. Oh my goodness. Get back in there. there we go. Your buckets, bucket. This bucket, that's right. Oh my gosh. Oh, we could go a long way with this, couldn't we? <laughs> oh my. And put that in. Then I'm going to set this aside. We'll be taking professional photos so that you can see the finished arrangement tomorrow. Uh, I'll post it on the Tulip Bunch Facebook page first. And then over the weekend, Susie and I will get them posted out into YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram so that you can see them. And you can see how quickly it really gives you a beautiful autumn arrangement without a lot of effort. I'm going to put a little bit more over here because I just feel like it needs to be fuller. Drop that in, then I'll set it aside because I've got more I want to share with you. I don't want to stop too soon here. I've got too many things to share. If you have not tagged a friend or shared this out, please do. Let's see how big of a crowd we can get here for autumn. So we've talked about repurposing by removing the petals, standing them up straight to get them to look alive even when they've started to fade. Now you want to do that only when things are going to hold well and then providing lots of texture to support everything. You can see them with the Buckeyes inside. It gives it a finished design that's pretty cool. Do you like that one? If you do, give it some love. Let's grab another thing here. I'll go a little larger on this one and see what we've got here. What's going on out there? What are you doing? Have you been vociferous? It seems kind of quiet. I can't hardly hear you. Who's here today? Maybe I'll whisper. If I whisper, will you say something? Yeah. Come on, I need to hear from you. You're too quiet. What's going on in your world? I want to know what is happening out there. Well, I have some answers or some recommendations for uses on the cake stand. Several people have commented that a Biedermeyer design would look lovely. Uh, some folks like to use a Lomi tray and create a centerpiece on them. And Scott suggested using museum putty or museum gel, which is not permanent, but it does allow you to co connect them and create an even higher elevation by stacking your cake stands. Great ideas. So there you go. So that's excellent. Keep the ideas coming because those are great thoughts. Um, this is a beautiful ceramic vessel that was gifted to me. Then I have some oak leaves. How to take care of autumn leaves. Let's talk about that. Autumn leaves, if you give them a cut at a strong slant, okay, then 
pare it and go in a strong plant and then really whittle it, you really want to damage that stem so it's different than a normal flower. Because normally you wouldn't want to shave like that, but with your autumn leaves, if you will shave them, they'll last so much better. So again, it's a really strong cut, really strong cut, then shave, shave, shave. Autumn leaves will do very best if you rough them up. They will drink so much better, they'll last longer, and then obviously make you happy. You can break it and tear it, and then go through and whittle down the sides as well. But definitely taking the time to mess with your leaves will make them last so much longer. And then a technique that a lot of people don't know about is if you take your autumn leaves and you spray them with the Design Master Glossy Wood Tone. So Design Master Glossy Wood Tone, which I checked. Yes, it's still available because so many things aren't, but it is. Design Master Glossy Wood Tone is a translucent paint. And if you spray your autumn leaves, it seals them and they last so much longer. Yes, they still are going to die. It's not going to turn them forever, but it holds them for quite some time. So that would be a care and handling tip that can be good for you. If you did not know that, this is your opportunity. Share that with somebody else. Let them know. Say, did you know what they learned at flower school today? You can use glossy wood tone on your leaves and they last longer. Yeah. Rose hips. These are just beautiful. They're local rose hips. They're grown right here and very long lasting. They're commercially grown. So it used to be rose hips you had to find alongside the roadside, but now people are growing them commercially and they hold so well. They will dry and look great. Leanne, Anne from Australia just chimed in and said that her nine-year-old grandson Ryan is watching with her today and he really loved that last arrangement that you did. Yay, Ryan! Welcome to Flower School Live. Love it. So I'm glad you're joining us and that you came on and I'm glad you liked that arrangement. We'll see what you think of this one, and then at the end, vote. Which one is your favorite? Because I'll have a few to have you choose from, but glad you're here. So grand. So two left, let's give a shout out. Welcome the first timer. We love having people join us. So that's excellent. So now I've got oak leaves, rose hips. I could add in some dahlias. Dahlias are a favorite autumn flower, and the key with dahlias for care and handling is to actually boil them. I know that. You're thinking, what? Boil them? Yes. You need to place them in boiling water. And I always tre already treated these because I don't have boiling water here in the studio, so I did it out in the kitchen a little bit ago. But if you go to both the Floral Design Institute resource page or the YouTube channel, and you do Flower School Dahlia Care. It'll go step by step for you, but the key is you boil the stem, and when you do that, they're going to last far longer than they will if you don't. And it seems counterintuitive. You don't think you should be cooking a flower, but reality is, if you cook that flower, it's going to live longer for you, and it's going to be beautiful. So boiling dahlias makes that autumn bloom lovely. So Scott <clears throat> had a question about the um, glossy wood tone. Could you treat forsythia that way also? Would that help with it shattering and, and shedding at all, do you know? 
You know, I'm not tried it on forsythia. That's a good question. Um, I've used it on all the autumn leaves. I've used it on Gaelic leaves. Love it on Gaelic. I've used it on Fatsia, but I've never tried it on Forsythia. So that's your challenge. When you get some Forsythia, which we're not in the right season, but when we get Forsythia, try that. Let me know what you find out because that's a great question. I really don't know. I've not tried that. So um, inquiring minds, tulips, has anybody used it on Forsythia? That would be curious to know. Michelle, what you got? So lots of questions on the dahlias with the boiling. Um, how can you tell if they have been boiled? And if you're not sure if your supplier has already done that, would it harm them to do it again? You would be able to tell if they've been boiled because the end looks like cooked asparagus. So that's kind of your clue. Um, if it's already been done and you did it a second time, I don't think it would hurt it, but that I don't know for a fact. Although I have done it a second time before, and I haven't seen it to be an issue, but that's something you might want to experiment with. Uh, but the key is the end will look different. Uh, and it's usually just the last two inches, and it'll look like cooked asparagus. Uh, and if I wasn't sure, I would default to boiling it a second time, personally because I think that it's worth having that problem. Uh, it seems to make a huge difference. And then the other question that always comes up, what other flowers would you boil? The only other thing I boil is um, hydrangeas, and those I only boil if they're already faded. I don't do them all the time. I do faded hydrangea and fill it in with the boiling if I need to, but I don't do it as a practice. So. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to set that one aside. I'll probably add some more to it when I'm done, but I've got another arrangement and I don't want to miss out. So, dahlia care and handling, boiling, leaf care and handling, a lot of scarring, whittle it down so that you get the bark showing. So now you've got a couple of different tips that we can use on arrangements as you do your autumn flowers. And uh, Susie and Caledonia have posted the link to the Tulip Tuesday where you talk about Dahlia Care. Oh, so excellent. Teed up for people to do some more research on that on our resource page. Good deal, because it's all right there. I just changed my mind. I was going to use that base, and I decided I don't want to use that base. So I'm using this base. So. You know, that's live for you. Change your mind, whatever you want. And I even purposely pulled and brought from home my rusty ball, because I love my rusty ball, and I thought this would be perfect to use for autumn, and I was going to use it for here, but you're going to have to tune in another day to see that, because that's not today. I changed my mind. I'm going to go to this ball. I like round things. They just make me happy. And the reason I pulled this and I wanted to share with you is I found some amazing nightshade that was growing just a couple of blocks here from the classroom. And it was so beautiful. I just went bonkers over it. And I found it a couple of days ago, and I just like, oh, i got to use that. But I didn't go back and pick it until this morning. But it is, let's get it onto the camera. Let's see, there we go. So nightshade, you know, it's like tomatoes. That's that family. And this vine was just growing against a fence down the road from me. Um, I would say two blocks from the classroom. Oh, we've got to get a close up of that part. So the flower part is purple. Am I on the camera? Yeah, just a little bit. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so it has this purple flower. Oh my gosh, it is just so grand. And so I found this and I thought, oh, I need that. So then I was like, well, what am I going to do with it? And then I remember this vase and I thought, how perfect is this? Because I can just feed it down in and then wind it around on itself tucking it in 
So again, autumn flowers, foraging, just makes me happy. It sort of works. And then you can add in autumn flowers that you have, that you've purchased. But it gives you an option. Now the mechanics on this, I'm just feeding it directly into the vessel. There's just water with flower food in there. There's no other support. So I'm having to be a little careful with how I weave it to make sure that it all fits in. I'm going to put this back in water because I don't know what I'm going to do with it and I don't want it to die. And I don't know the lifespan of this. We're going to find out because if it's dead, when Ricky comes in to take the picture tomorrow, we'll know, well, that was a stupid idea. But I don't think it will be. It seems very hardy and it is you know, related to the tomato. So I think it's going to be just Absolutely fabulous. What do you think of that? Is that the coolest? I just, oh, I was having so much fun. I thought David was going to not be having quite so much fun last night because I kept dragging him around. And like, oh, we got to go here. I got to harvest this. Oh, I got to get this. I got to harvest that. And he's like, can't we go home? And I'm like, no, we got to harvest. And I need it for the live stream. Oh, look at that. I don't even need anything else. It's done, don't you think? I mean, really, what else do I need to do? Okay, I'll do a couple more things. But, um, Marjorie thinks you need the pumpkins on a stick. Oh, the pumpkins on a stick in there? Oh, I don't know what I was gonna do with those. <laughs> I was thinking that the Freedom Roses oh, yeah. would give me an emphasis area that just comes down. And I might have to go back and add the pumpkins on a stick. I'm not sure how stable they're going to be in here. So we may experiment with this. You know, live is an adventure because you never know what truly will work. But let's see. We might do that. What do you guys think? Should I put pumpkins on a stick in this or stick safe? That's <laughs> like, how safe do you want to be, Kessler? <laughs> Well, they're loving the roses in there. I know, don't the red, I mean, they pick up the nightshade so well. Oh, it just, you know, sometimes things just work and they make you happy. They're just so fabulous. And this is one of those things. So let's grab a pumpkin and we'll just see what my options are. Oh my gosh, you guys are pushing me on it. Um, Renee just chimed in and said, fun fact, pumpkins on a stick are actually in the eggplant family. You know, I was, somebody asked me that and I was like, I have no idea. So it's eggplant family. Thank you, Renee. I love learning that because I did not know that. And I was, somebody asked me that, I was like, I really don't know. What do they come from? Where are they? And we were split about 50-50 with yes to the pumpkins and no to the pumpkins. But now that you put it in there, I kind of like it. Well, I'm, still, I'm still, I'm just, you guys are pushing me on this one. I don't know about this, but I'm, I'm doing it for you. For the 50% that wanted it. Okay, so, let's see. And then Rick had a question. Uh, he has just purchased some of the hydrangea specific hydration solution and he's wondered if you had any experience with it. You know, I have not used it here at the classroom. I was at a meeting where we were testing it and chatting about it and exploring it and had some very, very good luck with it. So I think it is probably positive. Um, in the classroom, we are so fortunate that the hydrangea we get is pretty darn fabulous. And so we'll quick dip it and deal with it from that direction. But we really haven't had to deal with the specific hydration solution. So I can't speak to using it on a regular basis. But I can say when we tested it at the workshop, I was very impressed with it. Um, and so if you don't have 
A, access to good hydrangeas on a regular basis if they come in dehydrated, or if B, your word water is not maybe a perfect water, that that hydration solution might be a really wonderful option for you. Pumpkins are kind of fun in there. They are. They are kind of fun. <laughs> <They're> cute. <laughs> Even though I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm going to do this because I'm making myself nervous. Um, I actually had got these to do some testing for another arrangement, and then I just sort of forgot and stuck them in here. And then you pushed me because that's what you do. And I love you for it. Maybe. Um, Marjorie says thank you. <laughs> then I got some fun millet. Could go in here to add a little bit of dynamic line. I need another rose. I can see that as I spin it around. There's a hole here. So let's get that taken care of. They're loving your uh, vase collection today. You're using some fun stuff. You know, I did. I was just pulling some different things. I was thinking, we haven't used this in a long time, and I have so many treasures. It's like, ooh, I need to use this. Ooh, I need to do this. And so yeah, today was a, a vase treasure day. Okay, so now I'll flip this around so you can see. I'm just adding a little bit of dynamic movement coming out the opposite side, creating a diagonal. And I'm going to repeat it on the back side because I don't want it to have a back. I want it to be two fronts. So I'm putting the same thing on this side, but a little bit smaller. Okay. What do you think? Do you like it? Kind of funky? I think I like it. I think I could fit one more rose in there. There's always, you can always do one more rose, right? Always one more. And it goes right here. Balance off the back side. There we go. So now I've got it pulling front to back, adding depth. You've had flower school, you know those things. The nightshade wrapping around, pumpkins coming up, a little bit of millet coming out. Whew, okay, we survived the pumpkins. I've got time to show you one part of one arrangement, but I don't think I'll get it finished. But I want to show you one more thing I foraged because it was so much fun. When you're doing autumn flowers, the key is to make sure that you do all your care and handling well. If you miss something on the care and handling, your arrangements are going to die, period. That's all that you can even begin to think about, is they will die. So when it comes to the care and handling, you want to make sure that you have your flowers pre-mixed with flower food, which I had here somewhere, there we go, with flower food. Make sure that the water is already in there so that they're going to live. Okay, that has to be first off, period. And I've got a little bit here. I've got flour food in there already. Then when you're working with the hydrangeas, which are a favorite in the autumn, you want to make sure and include a bit of alum. I had alum. We had the students come in here for a photograph just before we went live, and of course I had everything set out on my table, and now of course I moved everything and I can't find anything. What you looking so for? Alum. Is it not behind you by your wire? Like normal? It was there, and I moved it over here, and I bet you it flew off the table. Yep, when we spilled the water. There it is, on the floor. Got it. So the alum, you put in a little plate, and we dumped a bucket of water over. We had quite an adventure in here. At 10 minutes to live, it was very interesting. But when you're doing hydrangeas, pull off some of the foliage. Even though you love 
of the foliage, it sucks the moisture up. And so you want to pull that off. Then when you give it a cut, dip it into the alum, which alum is a pickling spice. We have it available on the website, so you can order it there. It's a white powder. And if you place it into your container, after you've dipped it, it allows it to drink better, make sure that your flowers are going to live a little longer. Then other things that you can do to make them last better is to seal them. Okay, so this is fascia, which you know I love, so I've already sealed those. But what I do when I'm sealing them, and it makes them prettier too, is I just take Crying Glory, spray it, and then using a paper towel, wipe it down. So that you're sealing that whole surface and you're sealing it as well as shining it so that it's prettier and it's going to last better. And snap that in there. And I've already sealed most of these and have them ready to go so I didn't want to waste time. Then another tree that is just fabulous now right here in Portland that is, let's see, what would it be? Maybe four blocks from the classroom? Yeah, probably four blocks from the classroom, is the golden chain tree. But the golden chain tree gets these seed pods on it. Hear it? Isn't that great? Anyway, so I was out picking those last night. Thank you, David. Um, and just setting those in. They don't need water. And where are they? All my stuff got hidden away when the students came in. There we go. And you're setting those so that it fills. And the main reason I picked this arrangement is because autumn doesn't have to be yellow and orange. It can be green, because green and the bronzy hues look fabulous together, because they're complementary on the color wheel, red and green. This is sort of a bronzy brown. You can see a little bit of red to it. And so it really lines up really well. And then mixing it with deep green of the green trick dianthus, adds even greater texture, makes it look so cool. And then you can go back and add magnolia, even just individual leaves tucked in. And if your bowl is big like this, you can just feed everything in. Then my rusty ball is the perfect thing. It actually has a hole. I got this probably 30 years ago, 25 years ago, at the San Francisco Garden Show. And I just thought it was the greatest thing. And somebody says, why did you buy a cannonball? I never <laughs> thought of it as a cannonball. I thought of it as a rusty ball. And I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And so that can, I just have a shish kebab skewer that fits in the hole in the bottom. And it just settles right down in and then leans against everything to add into my focal emphasis area. So autumn flowers, now you know, care and handling, foraging, make sure that you use them both fresh and dried. I showed you how to take the petals off because they're beautiful both ways. Next week we'll have more flower fun. Make sure you invite your friends, come join us because this is an hour where we all get to be together, get inspired, do something we love, and collaborate with fellow tulips. See you next time.